What's going on guys, Brad Messersmith here with Slurve.com bringing you another GPP strategy video. Today we're going to be talking about the WGC Bridgestone event and as is the case with most WGC events, we are talking about a no-cut event with a very limited field. This week there is going to be roughly 60 or so players, I think, give or take a couple of guys who are, are in and out um, as the week goes on, um, but right around 60 players or so. going to be a really interesting week. Um, you might want to consider thinking about some different strategies in, in GPPs. Uh, one of the things I'll be looking at are whether or not guys can can make birdies um, in a, a week where there's uh, not a lot of differentiation. There's not going to be, I mean, everybody's get, got six of six through the cut. There's going to be four rounds for every golfer you pick. Um, you know, looking at guys who are going to be able to make birdies are, are really going to um, rack up the DraftKings scoring could make the difference between some of the winning lineups and, and some of the lineups that don't do so well. Um, you know, even even the guys who are finishing way down low, if they're able to rack up birdies and birdie streaks and eagles, we're, we're going to be looking at some really interesting scoring this week. So something to keep in mind as you go as you go to pick your, your GPP lineup roster construction and, and uh, whether or not you think guys can – can lead to the ultimate winning GPP lineup if they're uh, they're not able to rack up birdies this week. Um, so let me get right into it. I'll talk about some of the guys I, I like for GPPs this week. Um, first and foremost, I'm going to go with Justin Rose. He has really good course history. He's got a top five in three of the last four appearances here at this event. Fits the course to a T statistically. Um, really, really good T to green game. We're going to be looking at um, Firestone Country Club, which is, is really going to be a course that that benefits the guys who are are the uh, accurate guys, um, especially coming into the green. Uh, it doesn't necessarily hurt to be long off the tee. We've got a couple of long par fives, but uh, these guys who consistently do well year after year at this event are the guys like Justin Rose, who are just elite from tee to green. Um, really, really good approach players. Uh, he Justin Rose is coming off a really high profile miscut. He was under 10% owned at the US Open when when his uh when he missed his last cut. Um I think a lot of people recognize him as one of the higher profile guys who missed the cut. So um expect his ownership to be a little bit deflated. Obviously with the course history you can expect some sort of bump there, but I think he'll still be low enough that he makes a a really interesting option in GPPs. And for what it's worth, he's the top projected guy in, in my projections. So um, anytime we've got a guy like that, especially who's under 11 or 12K, uh, who's leading leading projections, has really good course history, um, has had decent form. Obviously, like I said, he's coming off one missed cut, but has been pretty good other than that. Uh, really, really good recipe, I think, for, for a great GPP play. I, I will be having a lot of Justin Rose in, in a lot of my lineups. <clears throat> Moving on, we're going to go uh, way down to Ricky Fowler. I'm actually going to go ahead and pass up all the top salary guys this week. Um, I, I will be playing probably all of them. So I, I think that what I'm going to do is take a little bit of a, a lower variance approach, get a little bit of all of these guys, and, and hope, I, uh, hope I can hit the winner and a, and a couple of guys in the top five and then uh, find some value down low here of, of guys who have some upside and uh, and that's the way I'm going to differentiate myself. Uh, also worth mentioning, it's worth leaving some salary on the table this week with so few guys to select from. Duplicate lineups are going to be really common, so um, leaving something like three to five hundred dollars on the table when you're making your rosters is is certainly acceptable. Um, definitely worth worth considering as a strategy. Should help you differentiate your lineups. So uh, Ricky Fowler at 9,000 is the next guy I want to talk about right now in my ownership projections on the FantasyFanatics.com. I have him projected at 7.6% ownership. Um, obviously, he's at a huge discount at only 9,000. Um, I fear that as the week goes on, I think that number, my projection, is going to go up. I think he's been talked about quite a bit, so I could very well see him reach up into the 10, 15%. Don't think he'll breach 20%, but um, it certainly is a possibility with, with so few guys to select from. Um, I'm going to kind of monitor that and play that by ear. Uh, I do a final projections update on Wednesday night, so if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure you get over to thefantasyfanatics.com and, 
and uh, see where I land on Ricky ownership this week while you're building your lineups. Um, Ricky is currently seventh in the official world golf rankings, and he's priced 13th in the field in terms of salary. Uh, he's second in par four scoring and is sixth in strokes gained tee to green. All things that I think speak to him doing well here. Uh, he has decent course history here for what it's worth. Um, you know, I think Ricky Fowler makes makes an interesting GPP play. Really, the biggest thing for me is going to be his ownership and, and where I think his, his ownership is going to going to wind up. Most likely, I'll probably have more than than anyone is is going to have of him uh, in the field, and I will I will go overweight with him. Next guy I want to talk about is Daniel Berger at 8,200. So Daniel Berger is new to this event, first timer here, and I've talked about this in the past. I've talked about it this week as well on the podcast. Um, Daniel Berger, whenever I go to roster a guy who is new to a course, I, I like to ask myself, has it been done before? Um, have we seen a, a rookie or somebody who's new to the event come out and um, show really good upside potential? And the astounding answer this week is yes. So Jason Duffner, Brooks Kepka, Justin Rose, Matt Kuchar, uh, Patrick Reed, Louis Oosthuizen, David Lingmurth, Danny Lee, KT Kim, all had top 10 or better performances in their first appearance at this event. So um, I'm certainly not going to be ruling out any of these guys who are, are new to this event this week um, based on just the fact that they're new to this event. Um, I think I've, I've kind of... I've kind of covered that um, potential pitfall for, for Daniel Berger in my mind, um, just kind of looking back at the history. Daniel Berger's made cuts in all of his events for the last 10 weeks, so he makes kind of an interesting um, cash option. I don't necessarily always think of Daniel Berger as, as the most consistent uh, type of player for cash, but I think this is an adjustment that I'm getting better at trying to make for cash, and I'm certainly learning from Slurve's own Kenny Kim. Um, who is, I, I think, one of the sharpest cash game players around. Um, but that being said, Daniel Berger made cuts in all the last 10, 10 weeks. Um, obviously, there's no cut this week, but he has the potential to really go on birdie streaks. He can he can seriously score, and um, he has a win in two top 10s in that same 10-week span. So certainly has some upside here that we're looking for in GPPs. At 8,200, I think he has winning potential that uh, you know, once you get down kind of in, in this 8K and below range, there's there's not much of that out there. So um, I like his price. I like a lot about Daniel Berger this week. I'll have quite a bit of him. Next guy I want to talk about is Kevin Na at 7,300. Na has a really interesting fact here. Um, Na has a top 20 or better in every WGC event through all of last year except the Dell match play in 2015. So um, – you know, he, he's consistently come out. Uh, the reason I, I know that is because I was looking back at, at his season la this year and last year, and, um, you know, Kevin Na has been really underpriced, I think, for how well he plays in these difficult field events and things like majors. Uh, he, it seems like he's consistently 1000 or 2000 cheaper than, than I really think he could be uh, based on his performance in these types of events. So, um you know, he, he really does continue to just outperform his price in these types of spots. Uh, really good cash play, I think, as well. And I think if I had to pick a sleeper to win, Kevin Na would probably be it. Uh, like I said, there's not a whole lot of winning upside when you get kind of down into this 7K and, and um, mid-7K and below range. So I think Kevin Na has the potential. I don't think uh, I don't think he necessarily has a high likelihood of, of winning, but I think he's certainly got top 10 upside, which is um, – which is really what we're looking for here. Uh, so the last guy I want to talk about is Emiliano Grillo at 7K. I haven't really heard him talked about a lot, so I think he's going to be a little bit lower owned than we're used to seeing. He's, he's kind of a popular DFS option. On a week where there's not going to be a whole lot of ability to make yourself contrarian, I think he makes a, a really interesting play in GPPs. Um, so with Grillo, I want you to don't cheat. Close your eyes, take a second, pause the video. Tell me what he finished last week without looking. For those of you who are super sharp and are a lot different than me, you will know that he finished second place last week. Um, really, really quietly performed very, very well. Um, six to seven cuts in the past 10 weeks. He's a winner on tour this year. He won in the swing season as a rookie. Um, you know, he, he doesn't have a whole lot of winning upside. But uh, I think he's he's got it at 7K in in a difficult event like this. 
Um, one of the few golfers, I think, in this this field that is talented enough at uh, at 7K to to pull out a win against some of the the world's best golfers. Um, outside of that, guys, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter at Brad Messersmith. That's M E S S E R Smith. Don't forget to check out the Slurve Expert Chats every single week. We're going to be on Wednesday at 9.30. We have a lot of fun stuff going on. A um, couple of uh, really interesting prop bets happened last week, so we'll talk about how, how that's going to play out and uh, who's getting punished for that. And then, uh, you know, obviously we're going to be talking about a lot of the guys we like. And uh, and last week we were all over a lot of the, the guys who were up towards the top of the leaderboard, especially some of those sleepers. Um, that we're looking for in GPP. So make sure you head on over here, set your calendars on Wednesday, and you can interact with with some of the sharpest guys in the industry as we talk about this week's salaries and, and players. Other than that, I think we'll catch you next time. Thank you very much for listening, and we'll see you guys later.